Well, we told you on a previous episode that Google's Project Aura modular smartphone was delayed, and now we know why. The phones tended to fall apart when you dropped them. Ryan Whitwam is a independent technology journalist who wrote about Aura for Android Police multiple times, and he joins us now. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Now, why did Aura phones come apart on impact? What is it about their design that makes them fly into pieces? Well, uh, Google had this actually pretty cool idea to use electro-permanent magnets to hold the hardware modules on the back of the phones. Uh, so an electro-permanent magnet, it's basically, uh, it's a magnet that can be turned on and off electrically, but it doesn't require power to remain active. So, uh, you know, you have your modules on the back of the phone, they might be, you know, storage or CPU or whatever. And then uh, when you want to swap it out, you just, you, you just disconnect it and pop another one on. Um, however, it turns out that the connection between uh, the module and the phone is not uh, not good enough to keep it in one piece should you drop it. And, you know, if you drop your phone and the CPU just sort of falls off the back, <laughs> that's a pretty that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> so yeah. uh, so th I, that the entire basis of the hardware design was that they were just going to have these magnetic modules that would snap on. And if they can't do that, that requires some pretty significant hardware retooling. Uh, I don't know how they're going to keep the modules on the phone now. I mean, it's going to have to be some sort of, of physical locking mechanism, I suppose. Do you have any uh, speculation? I mean, obviously, one uh, possibility is some kind of case or, or bumper or something like that that holds you know, it all in. I mean, I've heard people speculating that they would just like they should just have a case, but I feel like that kind of uh, that kind of doesn't fit with with what Google's going for. It kind of uh, makes the entire idea of a modular phone moot if you have to like cover it with a case to keep all of the pieces together. Uh, I think that the idea is that you'll be able to have a, a lot of different inexpensive modules for, for the for the phone. So like if you want uh, one day like, a, a, you know, a, a module that takes up four spots for like a really good camera, you can just plug that in. Uh, but then the rest of the time you might want another battery module or something. And if you have to disassemble the phone in, in sort of uh, an awkward way to make that happen, then it just makes it a, a lot less compelling. In that shot right there in the video, if you're watching the video version, it was a cat module. I think that must be for cat photos, a special compartment there. Yeah, and if you have all these pretty modules on the back of your phone, you don't want to cover it up with a case, you yeah, know? That is absolutely true. Now, you know, we've, we've uh, hinted at the de general delaying of uh, Project Aura for quite some time. And personally, I'm most uh, vexed and uh, depressed by the cancellation or or postponement of the Puerto Rican taco truck distribution system. Do you know whether, first of all, whether that was postponed or or canceled? And second of all, why? That seemed like the perfect idea. Uh, my impression is that everything they were going to do before has been uh, canceled, uh, at least effectively. Uh, they don't know where they're going to start the trial yet, and it's not going to happen in Puerto Rico. I mean, uh, I'm sure eventually, the, you know, the phone will be available there. Uh, but uh, they're going to do some other kind of test, uh, you know, whenever the time comes for that. That's too bad because I think I almost convinced uh, Leo to uh, sign off on on uh, a trip for me to go and cover it <laughs> live. That's uh, that's a good tax write off. Thank you. Uh, now, let, let's uh, and let me ask you this uh, as an analyst: Do you think that this Aura concept, the concept of mod modular smartphones? Will ever become mainstream? Will this always be in the fringe for the hardcore, you know, Android geeks, or will this be, or makers, or whomever might use it, or will this be kind of a mainstream concept? Um, you know, I, Ara is really just it's it's unspeakably ambitious. I think yeah. uh, you can tell by how much trouble Google is having uh, getting it getting it up and running. I don't know that it's the sort of thing that's ever going to make a lot of sense to average people. Uh, especially now with smartphones uh, getting to the point where you can you can buy uh, a two hundred dollar Moto G that's a fantastic phone, uh, and if it lasts you two years, I mean it only costs you two hundred dollars. I mean it's different if uh, it was different a few years ago when you had to spend six or seven hundred dollars to get a phone that was in any way good, uh, and and then you know a few years later you'd have to do it all over again. Uh, so the idea of putting different modules in a phone to make it, you know, a little bit a little bit snappier and keep it running longer made a lot of sense. Um, I think now it just makes sense to people that really care about specs and really want to have the best of the best all the time. Uh, I, don't, I just, I don't see Aura being a mainstream success, but that's never stopped Google before from pursuing something. Yeah, and it certainly is interesting. And I think it, it what, what is it also interesting is when they started it, it seemed... I guess a little more impossible than it seems now. Nowadays, it seems increasingly likely. 
you know, kind of like some of their uh, other projects, like Project Tango. When they first started Project Tango, it's like, oh, okay, you know, they're using electronics that used to be in like these, you know, huge expensive computers. Now they're putting them in smartphones. There was a big giant bump on the outside of their prototype. That'll never happen. But I'm thinking, you know, in two or three, four or five years, that kind of functionality will be common. And this kind of Project Aura uh, modular smartphone handsets will be reasonably affordable. I mean, they're trying to make them super affordable. Of course, they're they don't have, when they're stripped of features, uh, they'll be fifty bucks, right? And then to add yeah. uh, real modules will really add up. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's techni uh, technologically feasible uh, somewhere down the line. It's just going to be a question of whether there's really a place in the market for that sort of product. Yeah, it seems to me like the perfect device for people who have really unusual needs. So, for example, if you need a, you know, uh, a see-in-the-dark camera, right, you're not going to find an yeah. off-the-shelf smartphone that does that. If you're going to need a, a thing that shoots poison darts or some other, you know, special need, uh, then you're going to go for the Aura. And if, you know, if they corner the, the, uh, the, the radically vertical markets and all of them, that's yeah. adds up to a reasonable market, I think. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure FLIR is just, uh, <laughs> is loving the idea that they could build uh, an Aura module because yeah. I mean, right now they're selling a $250 uh, USB accessory that adds a thermal camera to your phone, which isn't super convenient.